Henry Beecher was a doctor serving with the US Army during World War II. He was an anaesthetist. He treated soldiers wounded from the front, preparing them for surgery. But as Allied troops stormed the beaches of northern Italy under heavy bombardment, his field hospital was running low on morphine. His nurse, in a turn of ingenuity, injected a wounded soldier instead with salt water, but assured him he was receiving a powerful painkiller. Rather surprisingly, the injection greatly relieved the soldier's pain and staved off the onset of shock. Beecher returned to Harvard after the war, very skeptical of the real benefit of many of the medicines of his day. He championed stricter testing for newly developed drugs, critically including trials against simulations of the drugs, against sham treatments, placebos. This was pretty annoying to the pharmaceutical companies at the time, who to that day had built their businesses on, uh, businesses on providing medicine for what ails you, only to have people discover that the human body often does a bang-up job of healing itself, and many of their treatments were indeed as effective as salt water or sugar pills. Thus, the placebo effect, as it was termed, was cast as the devil, the enemy of medicine. Today, the word placebo carries strongly negative connotations, slandering something as untested or ineffective. But a placebo response is a real effect. It's physiological, not just mental. And I think a healing response, triggered only by ritual, deserves at least brief celebration and exploitation, the result of millennia of evolution that we can unlock with a sugar pill. Now, fake drugs don't fight physical disease, but the placebo effect is more nuanced than you might think, so I want to share some stories with you. As Beecher discovered, and many have replicated since, placebo pain relievers have a strong impact on pain tolerance and relief. The effects can even be localised so that a cream applied to one hand raises pain tolerance just in that hand, but not the other. A fake muscle relaxant releases muscle tension, but the same inert substance described in the opposite way increases muscle tension. Fake stimulants, including placebo coffee in regular drinkers, causes a release of dopamine in the brain, just like real drugs. This has similar effects on blood pressure, pulse, tension, and alertness. These are physiological, measurable changes, not just reported symptoms. Placebo pain relievers are also widely studied. They're shown to affect the same areas of the brain activated by real drugs, and show surprising effectiveness in treating depression where how someone feels is the difference between sickness and health. So, while a sham treatment doesn't fight disease, it can have a strong impact on conditions under the control of the brain and nervous system, including pain, fever, and immune response. Even an ineffective treatment raises our expectations of getting better, and these expectations, built by therapeutic ritual, have a strong impact on patients' well-being and expectations of getting better. These expectations uh, have a strong impact on the effectiveness of our built-in healing processes. Now, these expectations are surprisingly malleable. For example, the size of a pill, placebo or not, makes a difference. Bigger pills work better than smaller pills. In the same way, more pills is better than fewer, and a painful injection is much more effective than pills. A brand name visible in a treatment makes it work better. So does a high price tag. So, someone who pays more for a more effective sham actually is more likely to respond. Cheerful yellow pills make the best antidepressants. Red makes the best stimulants. Green is most effective as a chill pill. And a serene blue makes the most effective tranquilizer. Except, not in Italian men, where the color blue is too closely associated with the vigor of the national football team. So the placebo response demonstrates a strong influence of your mind over your body. But this is a closed system. There's a feedback loop. It goes the other way as well. Your body state influences how you think and feel. When your primary school teacher told you to sit up straight in class, it wasn't just because it looks good to someone walking by. An attentive posture, back straight young man, head up, eyes forward, improves your mental alertness, helping understanding and retention. Mimicking physical attentiveness tricks your mind into paying attention too. In the same way, taking slow, deep breaths while stressed calms you down. Your body can fool your mind into believing you are calm and in control. So, I'd like you to do one thing for me as I finish. We're going to do an experiment. I'd like you to smile. You can close your eyes, perhaps, and do a big smile. You can force it. It doesn't need to be real. But twitch up the corners of your mouth. Feel your cheeks rise and take a deep breath. 
Do you feel a little happier? Calm and in control? You can even bring yourself a moment of happiness, which can be handy if you ever need it. Thank you.